Are you there? Went to preach in one country and uh, unfortunately before we came, is it unfortunate or fortunate? Depending on the angle you are looking at it from. A certain blogger that I've never met now took, he saw something happening in that country that was not biblical. And the thing that was happening was it was men of God, leading men of God that were responsible for it. So in order to critique that thing, he went and got one of my message, caught a part of it, and presented it as part of the argument to establish the case against that trend. Are you there? And I've never met this um, blogger. Never met him before. I hear that preachers pay bloggers to fight people and to do all that stuff. <laughs> that one is not a preacher. <laughs> if you can pay money for someone to criticize somebody, he's, 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 he's in circle. You know those days, there's something that we used to call circus. How many of you still remember it? If you are not, if you have not been around in the seventies, you may not know what I'm talking about. Just drama. So, and it will interest you to know that I preached that sermon like two years before the blogger is using it now to critique a situation. And I had a meeting in that nation at the time. The first thing we experienced was that our billboards that were everywhere i know i know you know what i'm talking about the people were mobilized and they were not mobilized from other places from church churches to vandalize our billboard. in fact the owner of the man renting the bill sorry the owner of the billboard the guy that rents the billboard out, say in the history of this billboard, it has never been vandalized. Commotion everywhere. Commotion everywhere in that nation. And I prayed about it. God was still saying, go. And that was enough for me. Are you, are you there? Then the spirit of glory. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ah, he said, when you are, when you are, let me, where's that scripture? I need, I need that scripture back. First Peter chapter four, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Happy are ye. Everything was done to make that meeting flop. I'm not talking about small men. I'm talking about men that, heavy men. Everything was done to make sure that that meeting flopped. And you know what? Because it was of God, it could not be overthrown. That was one of the litmus tests that, that showed me that uh, even if I am called to be with the Lord, what has happened, what is taking place will not die. No, it won't. <laughs> I saw men in authority fight and they lack the ability to overthrow it. He said, happy are you. That this is the... This is the root to authority. This is the root to spiritual capacity. Because if you are going to be an emissary for the kingdom of God and you don't have marks of suffering, you are a liar. The 
there's going to be resistance because you want to stand for God. People will rise up, but it is a sign of good things. You are being recommended for another measure of the spirit of glory that raises up. That, that will discomfit the efforts and the arguments of men to suppress. This is the way of promotion in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I remember during my youth service, there was a fellowship that I, I felt led to be part of. And um, those were the days that, you know, before I left camp, campus, Little anointing had come on my life. So when I went for youth service, it was an opportunity for me to train myself in the law, train myself for ministry. So when we got part of that fellowship and got involved, and the hand of God began to come on me. Hallelujah. I was a simple teacher and an intercessor at that time. I was not a powerful man. But when I finished teaching, the glory of God will come into that place and all kinds of encounters will begin to take place. In fact, some of them, I, I, I don't even know how it comes. So there were preachers in that fellowship that felt that I was stealing the show. So what they did was that they got a lady to testify against me that I committed fornication with her. So, and as my custom is, I don't defend myself. Now, if it is me you are attacking, forget about it. I won't, I won't say anything. But if you, if, you, if you are doing something that will bring injury to the body of Christ, me, I can't sleep. That thing you are doing, do it without putting it online because you are going to damage the body. I will rise up. I have a calling along that line to respond to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That my practice you are trying to sell, I will use the Bible and pick it out. But this is not, this is contraband. And when I'm doing that kind of business, I don't bring the person into the view. What is wrong is not the person. What is wrong is the my practice. Do you understand? So I, that, it's part of my business, okay? So the lady testified. That I this virgin her. So the whole congregation said, yes, I, I kept quiet. Even my friends, close friends, came to ask me, is there, it? No, don't worry. That's not what you respond. Don't defend yourself. Allow God, you know, God, it just like Jesus was killed and buried. And then the court of heaven sat on the matter. And then resurrection was the response of the final justice terminal. Ah, don't be in a hurry to prove. Don't stand up and say, hey! it means if you do that, you are, you are guilty. You, are, you have something. There's something you are trying to preserve. So, I kept quiet. Kept quiet. Then I now went to minister somewhere not too far away. And three crippled people walked in that meeting. And the news of that empowerment, he went back to the fellowship. So the leader said, This man did not have this anointing before. The anointing, we know how God uses him. He raises cripples now. They began to check themselves. Then I went somewhere again to minister. Strange things took place. In fact, that I came back and I was asking God, what are you up to? Are you there? When these things began to take place, then God went to torment the lady <laughs> that brought the false testimony. The torment was strange, and then she came and 
confess that, ah, it is this pastor that came to tell me to do. I was not even in that city when the confession broke out. So by the time I came back, the elders came and, uh, you know, were in the house of God. And they even, their presentation was even very terrible. They couldn't coordinate. But you know what? God had elevated me. That was how God gave me openings to begin to preach in cities and in other places. So I, I, I didn't have time to be available for, fellowship, for the fellowship again. God opened doors and I began to minister in I follow you. And I didn't have time to be available. Not because I didn't want to be available. But there were so many kingdom things that opened up that I had to attend to. And when I was already operating on this tangent of grace and power, it was one year later that the truth now came out. As at the time the truth came out, I didn't even need that truth. Because it was obvious from the verdict of heaven, in keeping with the spirit of glory that already rested, that heaven has already judged the matter. Are you, are you following? Don't defend yourself. Allow heaven to judge the matter. 